The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey everybody, how's it going today? And welcome to the uh, daily uh, webinar, weekly webinar, I guess, on the new platform. Uh, the uh, title, Welcome to the New Nadex Platform, Are You Ready? webinar. Uh, my name is Adam McCaden. I've worked at Nadex here for a few years now, uh, working on our platform team and uh, developing our new products here. So I've been heavily involved in getting this new platform out to you guys. Uh, today, we're really just going to go over um, how to use the new platform a bit, uh, some of the new features. We're going to go through everything and uh, going to give you a timeline for, uh, you know, when we're moving off the old platform, uh, when that's actually going to happen and, and go uh, fully. So uh, just to jump right in here, first, we have this wonderful disclaimer that you probably recognize if you've been on any webinar that we've done before. Um, I'll give you a second to read through this. Basically just says, hey, trading, it involves risk. Um, anytime you, you trade anywhere, and especially in ADEX, there is risk involved. Um, also, do not trade with anything besides discretionary income. Don't be trading with your rent money, your food money. Uh, you definitely want to be trading with that other income. Trade with money that you are uh, willing to lose, you know, if, if that uh, worst case does happen there. Um, so I'll give you another second to go ahead and uh, read through this here, but it shouldn't be anything that's really new information for any of you on this webinar. <clears throat> All right. Oh, and I will say this last part of this, I will be placing some demo trades on the uh, on the account today just to show you guys how to functionally go through the platform. This is not a recommendation of uh, to make any trades or anything like that. I'm not sure that you guys would even want to listen to my recommendations, even if I could make them. Um, All right, we'll go on to the next slide here. Uh, this is just our customer service line um, and the customer service email. Uh, if you do have any questions, I'm going to try to answer them on this webinar. Uh, but if I don't get to them or uh, maybe it's too complicated to answer just in a simple uh, one or two uh, sentence, then definitely feel free to reach out to our great customer service agents through this number or through that email. Uh, this is just a little bit of the agenda. We're going to go over the new layout of the new platform. I'm going to go over how to place orders, manage those positions, uh, going to go through where to find all your settings. And then finally, uh, going to go through the charts. The charts are probably the thing that has changed the most from the old platform, that and sort of the, the user interface. So I do want to spend a good amount of time just going through all, uh, you know, all that's offered, all that's new on those new charts there. Uh, I will say just while we're still on this screen, um, so many of you probably have noticed, uh, so basically we're doing this, so Nadex as a, as a whole is sort of evolving. Um, uh, probably noticed a couple of weeks ago that we flipped over to a new website, so we got a brand new look feel for the new website. Um, as of uh, Monday, I believe, um, we also flipped over to uh, whenever you log in, the default login is going to be that new platform. Now, you still can get to the old platform if you still like to use that. Um, so, you know, we aren't turning it off yet, and there are still things on that old platform that we don't have on the new one. Uh, most, uh, namely, um, or the, the biggest one, I guess, is the history and those monthly statements. So uh, it, it is still going to be a better uh, way to access your history uh, and see how you've been doing your trading by accessing that old platform. <clears throat> Um, but uh, come November, we will be turning off uh, that old platform and everything will need to be done on the new platform. Now, we're not going to turn it off before we uh, get, you know, statements, history, document upload, things like that into that new platform. Uh, but know that it is coming and by November, that is when we plan to uh, turn off that old platform and have the new one as the sole way to trade on Nanex. Um, so, that's a lot of me talking. Let's uh, jump in and actually get onto the platform here. So uh, I'll show you how to go ahead and, and get to this new platform. Uh, you'll see in front of you this new uh, nadex.com, or you should see at least. I hope that it is uh, showing um, that you can see my screen here. Um, so you see this new nadex.com, uh, trade your way. This is going to be the same exact, you know, www.nadex.com. Uh, it's just a new kind of look and feel. And I definitely encourage you to go check out everything that the new website offers, a lot of good new learning tools and uh, education presented in, I think, a little bit better way to, to look through it. Uh, to get to the actual platform, though, we're just going to hit login, just like you would um, on, you know, the old, uh, the old site. And as of Monday, like I said, you will be actually be landing on the login page for the new platform. Um, so I'm just going to log in here with my demo account. 
And there we go, nice and easy. Now, uh, before I do go any further, I'll show you actually how to get to that old platform. Um, so if you do want to go back and you do want to go to the old platform, you need to see your history, et cetera, you can click this button up here at the top right corner that I'm circling. And there you go. This is the log. This is going to be the login page for the old platform. So I, I'll show you real quick. And that's floating All right now we're in, it's going to take a little bit to load. Um, that is actually one of the benefits of the new platform. You, you will notice that it actually loaded up a little bit quicker. Um, so it is, it should be a little bit faster regardless of the machine or the, uh, the browser that you're using. Um, so that's how you're going to get over here, but I'm going to just go right back to that new platform here. Um, and this upper right, uh, was just going to switch you between the old and the new. Oh, type my password in wrong. All righty. So here we go with actually looking through everything in the new platform. So first we're just gonna go simply through the layout. How do you access uh, all the same products that you you know are used to trading on the old platform? How do you uh, just kind of click around and navigate? So uh, it is fairly simple. It's just all gonna be over here on the left-hand side. You're gonna see your binary options, your call spreads and your knockouts. Uh, and as you go down through this, you'll see all of your market classes. So um, after, after you choose one, you'll see the relevant market class. Uh, and then you can click on that to see all the contracts inside. Um, <clears throat> remember that if you do want the five or 20 minute binaries, they're actually going to be down here and not inside, you know, the indices or the Forex uh, panels. So let's just click in here and uh, bring something up. Uh, I'm just going to randomly, let's do the dollar CAD. And uh, let's click and bring up a contract here. So you can see, I just, uh, actually I'm gonna take this off right now. You can see I just um, clicked on the, the expiration time. So you can see all the expiration times for your different products. And to actually bring up a chart and bring up a deal ticket, I just clicked on the blue or the red prices here for the buyer or the sell. I can also click directly on the strike and it's gonna change my deal ticket as you can see over on the right hand side. Um, so I have my deal ticket up, I have my chart. Now it will bring the chart up um, whenever you, when, whenever you actually click on the, the actual ticket, it will, or sorry, the actual left-hand panel will bring the chart up, will bring the deal ticket up as well. Uh, and it's just gonna be very similar to uh, the mobile experience and similar to the old platform. Um, I have my market order, I can click place order. And there we go, I just bought a dollar CAD contract that expires uh, in about 22 hours at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Um, so fairly, fairly simple, should be fairly self-explanatory on how to uh, kind of navigate this. Um, you can see we also changed a little bit of the strike lines and the strike prices. So you can see it's, it's shaded when you actually click on the red and the blue here. Um, the boxes are a little bit smaller, just uh, we think a little bit more intuitive and a little bit more, uh, a little bit easier to use. Uh, now, before I move uh, on heavily into, you know, managing your positions, I do want to show um, something that we do get a lot of questions about is, uh, can I tear my chart off? Can I tear my ticket off? What if I don't want to look at the charts? Uh, what if I want to have multiple tickets up, uh, multiple charts up, et cetera? And so you can actually do that. So on the, you see the top right here on the chart, the top right on the deal ticket, you can click this tear off button and you are going to get this nice there it's loading you're going to get a um you're going to get a deal ticket that comes up here and so let's actually go and see let's bring up a couple different ones tear this off and let's tear off a peso okay so let's say that i really like tra trading the peso the dollar cat and i don't remember what else i was trading um but let's let's say that these are the, the markets that i really like trading all the time and i don't really use nanx charts for whatever reason although i would say i would uh recommend you use them but um you know i know a lot of people out there do like using other charting packages um, but if you do, you know, just trade these three products, you can always set them up like I'm doing now, uh, tear off the different tickets. And then if I want to, you know, get into these, if I'm watching for a specific, you know, maybe price point, if I'm watching for a specific action in the market, um, I can always quickly get into them. I already have them torn off here and I can set them up like this. And obviously, you know, you can resize these. Um, I can, on my bigger screen, pretty comfortably get uh, eight of these on there. So um, if you do trade on more than eight, um, you know, you might have to shrink them a little bit, but 
uh, you will see that uh, it's it's fairly easy to have multiple markets up, multiple deal tickets up. Uh, let's say you want to go back and actually look at the different price ladders for these. You can go ahead and look at the different expirations and look at the different uh, strike prices on each one and choose straight from here. So this will allow you to customize your layout a little bit and uh, actually you know, quickly trade the markets you'd like to trade. And same thing with the charts. If you do like using our charts, you can click, I see I just clicked, uh, I'll do that again because it might not be extremely obvious what I did. Uh, this little chart button down here, I click that. I, I can see the charts and the deal ticket on the right-hand side. And uh, let's say I just wanna see the charts, I can hide that as well. So uh, you do have the opportunity here to really um, customize this how you want to. Uh, you could set it up like this. And again, you know, you can have your four charts set up that you're watching. Um, and uh, I, I will say uh, once again, that I know a lot of people out there don't use our charts. I do always recommend using the Nadex charts. I, I'm not gonna sit here and say, you know, they're the greatest charts in the world, right? I, I do think they're quite good. Um, but I will also say that one of the biggest things is uh, because these, you know, our underlying market prices are fed through a settlement calculation uh, every second, that this is going to give you the most accurate version of what the price you're actually trading on. And if you go somewhere else, you might see something that's just a little different purely because, um, you know, first of all, how Forex is calculated, uh, the different banks that you can get uh, from to actually pull the prices in for Forex, uh, as well as it getting fed through that settlement calculation so that you can always see the most accurate price that actually is gonna come down and uh, settle and be relevant to your contracts, whatever you're like, uh, like to trade. Um, so that is really how I, I like to set up my um, kind of multiple charts, multiple tickets. Um, but, you know, you can obviously set it up however you'd like. Uh, that is one of the things we try to do with this new platform, make it kind of customizable and hopefully um, make it so that you can use it however you'd like, however you want to trade. Um, so that's really uh, sort of the, the new layout for actually placing order, tearing off charts and tickets. I'm going to go through uh, just Placing your order, we already sort of did. Um, I'll, I'll do another couple on here. Um, let's see, you know, just get into some more contracts here. And uh, just so you guys can see as well, let me get into uh, a working order. So, oops, that is the wrong direction. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me get into a working order here. All right, so you can see on the bottom here, this is where all my live uh, contracts are coming up. Um, so I have my open positions here and you can see when I'm actually placing the orders here, they're coming up and you can see my profit and loss. You can see, uh, you know, your position. This is this plus one says that you're a buy position, the price, the current uh, uh, market price. And re always remember that this profit and loss, it is going to be based on the uh, average price you paid for it uh, versus the current price, right? Um, so always remember that this isn't actually what your profit, profit and loss is going to be. Let's say if this contract was going to expire in a couple of minutes, it is purely your profit and loss if you actually wanted to exit the contract right now. Uh, I know that is something that uh, sometimes confuses some of our traders. Um, so just always do remember that because uh, you know when, you, when you're actually ticking down, sometimes it'll say your profit and loss is negative, but if you are to stay in the contract till expiration, it could be positive. Um, just make sure that you you do understand that. Um, you can also see the indicative here and when this is actually going to expire, the time left, fairly straightforward stuff. You can also, when I click over here, I see my working order, uh, very similar to the positions. Basically the only column that is different is I can see how many that are filled, right? So I have one working order still out there and uh, I am waiting for that to basically get filled. My price that I want, is uh, 10, but right now it's trading at 2075. So it's not going to fill that until you know someone's actually willing to take that $10 price on the other side of the market. If I go ahead and click on this, uh, you can see that in my deal ticket, it just brought up my delete order and my amend order here. So if I want to delete this working order, I certainly can. If I want to change, let's say, you know, I, I'm willing to pay $12 instead of 10 for this, I can amend that order and you'll see it actually come up down here with the price of 12, or I can go ahead and delete that order and you'll see my working order has gone away. Uh, always important to remember as well, with working orders, you can delete them with actual open positions because you actually opened that contract, you aren't able to delete it, but you are able to exit the contract as long as someone on the other side is willing to take that contract off your hands. Um, so I can sort of show you how to do that right now. Uh, you will see as well that uh, 
these these positions just like on the old platform were sort of uh, smart so that uh, I have one buy side here if I actually click on them it's going to populate it on the sell side and let me actually choose something else just so you can see a little bit better um, so right now I have a you know Aussie yen contract uh, up on the deal ticket in the chart but if I click down here it should uh, bring up my euro pound um, ticket and it should bring it up on the sell side because I have one on the buy side right so it's so it's allowing me to get out of the contract uh, just a little bit easier and quicker and you can see there brought up my euro pound on the sell side all i have to do now is place this order i'm out of the contract uh, so uh, should be fairly simple to actually get in get out of those contracts the one other panel down here in this bottom uh bottom panel area is this 24-hour history so this is going to show you um the order history of everything you've done in the last 24 hours now this is the extent of the history and the extent of the statements that we offer on this new platform at this point we are currently developing a history and statements that uh, should hopefully be even a little bit better than what is offered on the old platform. I know that it has been a pain point for some of you in the past that the old platform's history is not uh, maybe as, as good or clear as it should be. Um, so we are trying to develop a better history for this new platform and um, we will certainly make sure that it is in there before we take away access to the old one. Um, but if you do want something more than 24 hour history, remember you can always open the old platform that is going to be how you access that, hit, that, access that history uh, for the time being until we get this into the new platform. Uh, so that really is taking care of the bottom panel, the deal ticket. We've gotten through sort of the, the main things that you're going to need to know for uh, trading, uh, and, you know, placing your trades, getting out of your trades, etc. Um, I'm going to go through just some of the, the settings um, on the platform and just a, a few little other uh, kind of cool areas that you might not exactly see. Um, Ooh, got an email coming up there. Uh, just about the history of saving. You can see we are we are uh, we are actually uh, developing that uh, currently. So um, if I go up to the top here, uh, you'll see first of all I have my available total P and L position value. If I click in here, I can hide these values. So you know maybe you you trade on the train or. Uh, hey, maybe you do YouTube videos and you don't want to see people to see exactly how much money you have. Uh, you can actually hide these values or show them. Um, you can also switch which actually shows here. So if maybe instead of my available balance, I want to see my whole account value. I can put that up there instead. And if you aren't sure what these things mean, you can click on this little information uh, panel and it's going to show you, you know, what each of these um, account value, account balance or available balance, reserve, et cetera, what that all means. So that is, uh, that's how you're gonna be how you navigate that. You obviously see the exchange time up top. That's always going to be an Eastern time. Uh, important to remember for those of you that don't live in Eastern time, all contracts are in Eastern time. Exchange is in Eastern time as well. Uh, you know, it even gets a little bit confusing to me because we are based in Chicago, which is not in Eastern time. But just remember when you're trading, uh, it's gonna be up here is where you're gonna look. And that's what all the contract expirations are based on. Going down to the bottom left now, we have our settings panel. Um, fairly straightforward as well. You have your tolerance, so you can so you can change uh, your tolerance here. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's basically when you do a market order, that's the uh, sort of cushion you have uh, that's going to, if the price drops more than that while it tries to do your market order, um, it's going to not let that go through. Basically, it, it's it's uh, it's kind of a safety valve for you to not get filled at a price that you don't want. Um, we also have the default order type so i have my market here if i switch that to limit and then i bring this up you're going to see now my order type is limit if i switch that back to market now we're market so pretty straightforward same with default contract size uh it's one right now maybe you like trading in 10 lots generally you could trade that to change that to 10. uh do just remember when you when you change this because uh, you know, last thing we we want is for you to change that to 10, but really you only wanted one contract and you kind of forget that. So um, always make sure that you're uh, you're looking there and you're not changing it to something um, that you, you don't want for the default. And then we have our session inactivity here. So this is going to be how long that it's going to wait to log you out. So right now mine's set to one hour, but maybe if I like just sitting back looking at my charts all day uh, and don't you know maybe click through the platform as much uh, I can set it to 12 hours and then it's not going to log me out uh, it's going to make sure that I could still get into the contracts right when I want them uh, without having to log back into the platform um, we also have our account section 
So this account section here, uh, this, this panel is going to show you how much you have available, your current position value, and your reserve. And actually, this bar, it's a little bit hard to see, but this bar is actually going to show you like a nice little pie graph of how much uh, is in each of these uh, buckets, really. So how much is in available to trade, which is taking up the vast majority here right now. Uh, but this little line right there is a position value. And uh, obviously, I don't have anything reserved currently, so there's no yellow in this uh, circle there. We also have our residential address, so we can change our residential address here. We have our contact details, pretty straightforward stuff. And if you need to edit this, you can just click edit. Um, and same thing with contact details, edit. You can see my very realistic phone number and email address on this fake account. Um, on the live account, this is also going to be where you're going to see your funding and your withdrawal options. Uh, so it's all, it's going to be in the account button up at the top right. Uh, the history, uh, so as I was talking about, we don't have the history and statements in this new platform yet. But if you actually click on it, it's going to tell you, hey, we are working on it. If you want to see it now, go to the old platform. So another way to get back to that old platform. And just going through the bottom, we have the contact us. So this number that I showed you before earlier in the webinar. And we have our feedback here. And uh, the feedback actually is so important. We have it in two places. You can go access it here or this bottom panel right here as well. The reason that we did this is because we are still building this platform. Uh, we are trying to make it the best possible platform for all of you. And so we are very interested in your feedback. Uh, for example, the reason that we uh, built this these tear-off tickets in the order that we did, right? We, we kind of uh, re- um, uh, reshuffled the order that we are building things in because so many people were asking for tear-off tickets. We're saying, I really need this functionality. So we went ahead and, uh, and built that first and really tried to build it in a way that would be useful to all of you. So if you do have anything that you really like, we do look at this feedback. I actually get an email every day uh, that has all the feedback that comes through this box. Uh, you know, we do I'm not going to say that every single thing that's ever put in here is going to be built, but we do look at it and uh, the things that are most requested, we do try to get out there uh, as quick as we can. So that is the uh, the settings uh, the and how you really navigate through everything. Um, now we can get into a little bit more meaty part of this webinar, which is going to be the charts. Uh, there's a lot of new things on the charts here that I, I'm quite excited about. I think our charting package on the new platform is uh, a significant improvement from the old platform there. Uh, so let's go through and, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of Forex here. Let's, let's pull up an indice and actually let's pull up a call spread so you can see some of the different strike lines we've created for this new platform as well. So I'm going to uh, hide that. And actually, if you uh, see what I just did there, you can actually hide all of these panels with these little arrows, right? So if I don't want my deal ticket up, I just want my chart. I can hide it there. I can hide this bottom panel. I can hide this slide panel. And now I have a very large view uh, of my chart here. Uh, so I am selected on the Germany 30. Uh, this is going to be um, basically the, the DAX. And as I select this, you'll see um, it's a little bit different from our old platform. You can actually see the range overlaid on the chart on this new platform. So my buy and my sell, um, you can actually see the range of in which you're trading. And uh, we actually have new strike lines for the knockouts as well. Um, let's pull one of these up. And you can see, can't really see that very well. Let's let's look at the four hours. Okay, so you can also see uh, these these new strike lines on the knockouts as well. So this is going to show you the range at which you're able to uh, to trade. So maybe you want to get in one, you know, near the bottom. Um, you can choose on this left hand side. This is going to be the different knockout ranges. So you can select them and then hit buy or sell. That's going to bring up your deal ticket from the uh, top right of the screen there. And now I can just place order. And of course, I just got into my position, which is contained down here again. So fairly straightforward. And uh, I think these new, um, these new strike lines should hopefully give a little bit more clarity to what's going on while you're actually trading on the chart there. So let's pull up. Uh, we haven't looked at many of the US indice contracts today. Let's pull one of these up. Let me go back here. Um, so we went over the strike lines a little bit. Um, you can see on these, they are shaded above or below, um, so it should be a little bit easier to uh, navigate there. And you've probably seen me as I've been uh, changing the times of our candlestick in the top left-hand corner. Uh, I, I've been going up here to do that. So on the old platform, um, 
on the charts, you would have to left click and it would bring up a sort of a panel on the bottom where you'd be able to access all the options. On this new platform, it's all going to be either in the top left hand corner or you can right click on the platform and you're gonna be able to access uh, everything from here as well. This is how I generally do it just because it's a little bit quicker. You know, I'm, I'm already in the chart. I can just right click and oh, you know, here's all my indicators on my drawings. Uh, but certainly you can do it at the top left as well. Um, so the first thing on the top left here, obviously I can change the times of my candlesticks. So if I want to look at five minute candlesticks, uh, I can change that there. Uh, I can get a little bit, uh, look at a faster look at, at the candlesticks in these markets. Uh, this is going to change how long uh, this is showing in here. So if I want to look at a week's worth of, of data, a week's worth of trade in the tech 100, I can do that. And now you can see uh, this is going back to July 8th, which is last Wednesday. Um, the indicators here, uh, this is quite cool. I actually quite like this. Um, so I'm right clicking and I bring up the indicators here. Uh, we have, in the past, we would get a lot of, you know, you have a lot of indicators, but I'm not sure exactly what they do. Is there any sort of information that you can give uh, to me on what they do? And generally we would say, okay, we have some stuff on our platform, or sorry, on our website, but you'd have to actually leave the platform for that. Now we do have these little information bubbles. So let's say, I don't know what an average true range is. I can hover over this information bubble and it's gonna tell me, oh, it's an indicator that measures the volatility of these instruments. And it's gonna give me a little blurb about the average true range, what it does. And so I know before I actually set it on the chart, what I'm actually setting, what this does, uh, how to actually use this indicator. Um, so I, I, I am quite uh, excited about this, the, these, um, just because, you know, I, I, I use a lot of uh, indicators, but I don't, you know, I don't know what some of these mean too. And I've been trading for uh, quite a while. So um, it is always good to, you know, have that there to get a little bit more information on what these things actually do. Uh, now, if I want to change uh, my indicators, or maybe for the average true range, I don't want a 14 day period. I can change that up a little bit. Uh, now you can see my, my um sorry indicator moved a little bit and uh, i'm looking at a 16 day period now you can change you know maybe i want this orange line and the fill to be yellow so you can really uh customize your indicators for however you know however you like looking at it you, you like the dotted lights the thick dotted lines whatever you'd like you can do that that's going to be clicking on this little button here and this is going to be for every indicator um you're going to be able to click on this little button on the left hand side and it's gonna bring up uh, all of your options there. Uh, similar for the drawings. Uh, now, it does have these information panels. Some of you may be saying, well, you know, I know what an arrow is, right? Uh, but for some of the other ones, uh, you know, maybe you aren't sure what an Elliott wave is. Well, this is gonna tell you what it is, and then I can click around and actually place an Elliott wave on my chart. Um, so or your Fibonacci retracement, right? It's gonna tell you what these drawings actually are, what they can be used for. Uh, so it, it should help, uh, I know uh, as a good trader, it's always, it's a constant learning process and always uh, always gonna be more educated. So hopefully this helps um, all of you out there educate yourself a little bit more about what all of these do. Going on to the next panel here, uh, I have my, my types. Oh, I will also say, so I can, um, you can delete all your drawings by going down to the bottom here, and that's gonna take all your drawings off the charts. Uh, so going on to the next one. Uh, so this is gonna be how you choose the different um, types on uh, the, dif the different candlestick types and the different uh, charting types on the platform. So that, again, this is gonna be the top left and with the right click, um, you can change to line, HLOC and mountain. And actually there is one uh, new, there's one new type on these new, um, charts and that's going to be the hike and ashy candles. Uh, I'm not going to go fully into what these candles are uh, in the scope of this webinar. Um, I do believe we actually are working on a blog post to go over these, but a quick Google can also get you there as well. Uh, you will see though very, very basically these candlesticks do uh, show you more of an average of what's happening in the previous period to this period and it sort of smooths it out. Uh, you can see visually uh, if I change between this candlestick, you know, it's a lot choppier. The Hike and Ashley is going to smooth that out and give you kind of a more averaging uh, view of what's going on in these markets. Let's change this back to five minutes. And uh, so definitely, you know, before you use those, um, go do your research and make sure that you know what, what that's actually telling you um, for those Hike and Ashley candles. Going down to the next one, we have the price. So uh, 
generally I would leave this as last traded. Um, it is going to show you what the ask and the bid. So I can do this and you can see my candles just moved up a little bit, right? Because now it's showing me the ask price uh, for the top and the bottom of the candles. Do this, you can see very, almost imperceptibly, these candles are moving down because it's showing me the bid price, um, the mid and the last traded. Uh, it's not gonna show it moving too much, but you can see it moving just a little bit when I do that. Um, I would recommend, unless you actually know why you would change that, to just leave it on last traded because last traded is going to show you the um, the the price that, that the settlement is going to be um, calculated on, right? So um, it's going to show you the best uh, and most and closest price to actually the final outcome of the contract. Um, so you know, unless you are really have a reason for changing this, I would say just keep it on the last traded. It's going to be better for you. Uh, to know the actual price of the market and the actual price of the contract. Going on here, we have this scale. Now, I actually think this is quite cool. Uh, so we have linear here, right? So what linear means is you see on the side here, uh, and actually I'm gonna take off this average true range so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, you see on the side here with this linear scale, it's just showing me the actual price of the market. So, um, you know, up here, 10,750 uh, and down below 10,550, right? So that's the price of the, da or sorry, the US Tech 100 um, underlying market. If I go to uh, percentage, it's going to show me uh, the percentage change from the first candle that I can see here, right? So uh, starting right here, we should be about zero uh, percent, and now I can see, oh, well, it's moved down about, uh, you know, point negative point six five, negative point seven percent, about somewhere in there uh, since this first candle, right? So it can give you a better visualization of how much this market is actually moving, uh, and in a percentage basis and not just in a uh, absolute number of basis. Uh, so it can be a little bit helpful just so you can get a better I uh, idea of how much this market is moving in a given day, given week, et cetera. And I'm going to change that back to linear just for the rest of this. Um, this, uh, so this show, it's going to, it's going to, um, basically allow you what parts of the uh, charts are showing, right? So let me put a drawing back on here. Just, you know, I've got a nice arrow there. And let me, now if I go to show, I can actually take that away. It's not gonna show my drawings anymore. I bring it back. Now it's showing my beautiful arrow right here that is pointing right at nothing. Um, I can also say the HLOC data. So see when I, um, you know, hover my cursor over and this last traded the highest, lowest uh, open and close and change uh, of each candlestick. If I take that off here, HLOC, you can see that box goes away. It's not here anymore. So if you, you know, you can decide whether or not you like that. I personally like it. It gives me more data, but I can't understand that uh, it could make it a little bit messier and more complicated to see the information you want to see on these charts. Uh, similarly with the indicators, let me just throw a, indicator back on here. If I don't want to see those indicators anymore, I can turn them off or on here. Um, now going on to this next one, uh, the open positions, working orders, and timelines. Let me just show you guys these. So I'll put a position on here and let's uh, let's put a working order on, uh, on this bad boy here. Change it to limit. Let's do five bucks. And so now I have a working order here. So uh, if I pull this up here, you'll see my uh, my current position on this market. US Tech 100 is right here on the top. I actually am already making a profit here. And uh, you can see my working order here uh, is sitting out there, but you can also see it on the on the chart itself, right? So uh, I can see, I, you know, I'm currently at a, at a loss of uh, 650 here. I am one buy side. I can see the strike price, that's uh, 10,644 that uh, needs to be uh, above if I'm trying to hold it to expiration because it is the buy side. I can also see my working order uh, here. So it's my working order is out there. If if it is filled, I will have a buy side position. That's this plus one. You can see it's grayed out right now. And also, uh, you know, when it actually gets in, it will be red or blue based on if I'm making a profit or loss currently on the position. And then of course, the strike line here. So this is gonna tell me I need that above 10, 7, 1, 6. Now I can also hide these here. Open position working orders in this timeline at the bottom. I can hide those if I don't want to see them. Uh, also, I can uh, use the hot keys. So you can see next to these, I have this P, O, and T. So if I'm actually selected on the chart, 
and uh, I'm going to hit, let me make sure I can see my working order here. Where did my working order go? There it is. Um, I'm going to hit P. That's going to toggle my open position there. Uh, I can bring that back up. If I hit O, it's going to toggle my working orders. And if I hit T, it's going to toggle my timeline there. So uh, a little bit easier way to actually toggle those. Uh, you can also uh, toggle your candlestick uh, times there as well. So if I start typing in a number, let's say 10. Oops, that is, huh. Well, why is that not working? Literally just working not even five minutes or sorry, not even, you know, five minutes before this, uh, I started this webinar. Let's get on to the market here. That is quite strange. Um, I'll have to uh, go talk to some of our developers, make sure that everything is working correctly here. Hmm. So it looks like we are having a little bit of technical difficulties. Uh, always, always fun uh, when this happens. Generally though, if I start typing in a number, is my number lock on? Oh, there we go. All right. I don't know why. I think my number lock wasn't on. So that that is on me. That is on me. Not now. I got to use this, and I don't think uh, a a um, something that the platform was doing. But if I start typing in a number here, you'll see this little box come up, and uh, it's going to tell you the interval that you can use for your candlestick. So if I type four and I hit enter, now you can see I'm looking at four hour charts now. Um, and if you forget about these these candlesticks, you can always change, or sorry, these hotkeys, you can always change them from here. Or if you're trying to learn the hotkeys, these are the hotkeys on the right side of uh, of the panel here. So um, let's say I want to look at one second. I'll type in one, and I have to type in S, right? Because I just type in one, it's going to give me one minute. I type in one S. Now I'm looking at one second. I can look at you know the tick. I can look at one hour, right? Um, so it, it's a little bit easier uh, if to actually change them using these hotkeys here, and just remember that you can see them, uh, the hotkeys if you're still learning them based on uh, these these uh, these little numbers and letters on the right side of the dropdown. Um, as we are moving on here, uh, we can see, so that was, uh, and you can also see, you can show or hide the price changes. Uh, and as you can see down here at the bottom, that's that's changing uh, how these are showing, right? So that's gone now. And the price line as well, um, that uh, can be hidden or, um, or brought back as well. Uh, layout. So if I have a certain layout that I that I use all the time and I like applying to different charts, I can save. So let's save this layout uh, with these current um, indicators on it. Let's save it as uh, Adam Awesome One. That's going to save my layout there. And if I actually want to go ahead and apply that layout, it looks like I've done uh, a, a few Adam Awesome layouts. Uh, if I want to apply that, let's say, you know, let's take this off. If I want to apply that to other charts, I certainly can go ahead and do that. Oh, the dash is already up, but if I take this off, I should be able to actually ap apply that layout again. Let's, this was the one, right? So you can see my indicator came back up. So if I have a certain you know set of indicators I like to use, I can save them and then I can apply them um, to whichever chart I, I want to uh, fairly quickly there. I can also delete my layout. So let's say, you know, I've decided Adam's awesome one layout. It's it's not working for me. Just go ahead and delete it. Uh, and so pretty uh, easy to go ahead and do that. Quickly apply or um, quickly apply the indicators you have to use or delete those layouts as well. Customize appearance, just what it sounds like. I can change the appearance of my candles. So let's say uh, you know maybe I'm a crazy man and I like my upward uh, candlesticks to be gold and I like my downward candlesticks to be purple. I can certainly go ahead and do that. Um, I, I guess I just made some LSU colors there. Uh, I can show or hide the grids to see those grid lines disappearing and then the watermark as well. So if I click apply, I can actually see uh, this is the FTSE contract and uh, it's the September expiration. Um, now that that expiration is the expiration of the underlying contract, the expiration of the contract, sorry, underlying market, expiration of the contract itself obviously is in 18 minutes. Um, I can also, uh, for customizing my appearance, I can do it differently for each, you know, line, mountain, et cetera. Uh, and to actually go back to the defaults, I can say reset the defaults and there's my red and green candles uh, back just how I like them again. And, you know, I can change all of this. So really you can make this however, 
uh, however you'd like to, to look at your charts here. Um, that's actually a little bit hard to look at, so I'm going to go ahead and reset the default again. Um, and just finally, last thing here that I want to show you guys for the charting is uh, my export chart. So um, this is actually, I find this quite useful, uh, especially let's say I'm trading and I have a setup that I really want to save, or, or maybe I, I'm seeing a market movement that uh, I think is very interesting, and I want to actually save that, go back and look at it later. I can hit export chart. And you can see here that I just popped up a image on the bottom left hand side. Uh, I can click and open that up. And so rather than like taking a screenshot, I can actually just export that chart straight away and it's going to uh, export an image of the chart itself. This is helpful for, you know, both actually saying, uh, saving uh, things you might want to see in the platform. Uh, also, if you ever see something that maybe doesn't make sense to you and you need to email a customer service, a little bit easier to do that maybe than actually taking a screenshot. Um, with some other screenshot program. So that is really going to be most of, uh, most of what we're looking at here. There actually is one other thing I want to show you in this top left here. So let's say I'm trading for a while and uh, I, I'm, I pull this out and now I'm, I'm really far away and I, let's say I can't find my way back to actually where the, where the beginning of the chart is, you know, where is, where is my chart? I can actually hit it. Uh, hit this button up here, this is going to take me to the latest price, right? So this is going to take me to the latest price. And it also, so if I move this and then I start scrolling in and out, I'm just going to scroll in and out. So basically, you know, you can see here that I, I can't see what's going on in the bottom here because this market has moved up so heavily. Um, so I can scroll in and out. I can hit this in and out, right? But uh, I'm losing what's happening down here. If though I hit this latest price and I don't move the charts up and down, as I scroll in and out, it's actually going to um, keep the market in the frame here, right? So uh, you can see that as I scroll in and out, it's actually widening the, the chart so that uh, I don't have to actually move this, this whole thing up and down. I can actually just, uh, you know, scroll in and out. As soon as I do move it up and down though, you know, I'm missing it again. If I hit this button, it's going to turn on again. So just a little uh, trick there um, that should help you, um, you know, minimize and maximize your view of the charts. Uh, that you'd actually like to see there. Um, let's see here. Just trying to make sure I'm not forgetting anything, but I believe that actually is really everything on the uh, the new platform that you need to know. I know we went pretty heavily into the the charting here, um, the uh, and, and kind of how to, to set everything up. Um, I will take a little bit of time now. If you guys have any questions, I haven't really seen many coming through, but if you do have any questions, I'll uh, certainly take some time to go ahead and answer them. And uh, I know some of you jumped on a little bit later into the webinar here. So I will reiterate what I was saying at the beginning that uh, this is sort of a, a new face of Nadex with a new website, with a new platform coming. And uh, currently the def this is going to be the default platform. However, you still can get to that old platform by going and clicking this button. Uh, that's going to be where you want to access your history. Uh, but come around November time, we don't have a set date, but it is going to be around November. We are going to be moving away from that old platform completely, and this will be the only working platform. So uh, definitely get over, start practicing on this new platform. If there is anything on the new platform that, hey, maybe we've forgotten that you really like from the old platform that you want us to add in here, leave that feedback and we'll try our best to uh, make sure that this platform has everything you need to trade before we get to that November date and we uh, move everyone over onto this one. Um, I'm not seeing really any more questions coming in here today. Let's pull this back up. I got this nice, uh, nice question screen you guys can see here. <laughs> Um, so if you do, uh, if you do have any questions that, uh, you know, weren't answered on this webinar or, um, you know, you, you think of later, you can always give our customer service department a call, uh, there, you know, I know them all personally, they're all, uh, great, great people to work with, very knowledgeable. Um, so give them a call or go ahead and email them and they will be able to help you out with any questions that you do have on the new platform or questions you have in general on anything else. Uh, I haven't seen any more questions come in now, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, and end this webinar here. Uh, thank you all for coming out and listening to me go on for about 45 minutes on the new platform. 
Um, do remember to leave any feedback in the feedback section if you would like to see any new features. And other than that, just uh, good luck in your training and uh, make sure you stay safe out there uh, in you know these uh, this COVID world that we're living in currently. Um, have a great rest of your day, everyone.